Well, because I think they're... Uh, let's go. Hello, hello everybody. Uh, so welcome to this last session at the Streaming Corner. So in this last session, we would like to discuss the different opportunities that uh, the Osteology Foundation is offering to all young researchers and young clinicians. So I think it's a very unmissable session because you can hear uh, from very good representatives and past uh, people that attended these different events what are the opportunities that the Osteology Foundation can offer us, isn't it, Jay? Yes, right. Eventually, we liked uh, young researchers from basic science to the clinical research to consider the Osteology Foundation as a partner for their uh, career development. So. Uh, we hope you will get inspired by the stories we are going to hear today. And first of all, we will focus on the ORA. The ORA it means Osteology Research Academy, which is a flagship educational program. So not every researcher has the opportunity to get some learning uh, of the research methodology. And the, since 2014, Australia has supported this kind of unique opportunity to the young researchers through the two or three days of extensive course in the field of preclinical study and the clinical studies. So uh, we have uh, ORA alumni today. And among the many ORA alumni, we have invited two of them here. So welcome our... Uh, Participants. Hello, hello, Miha. Hello, Katrin. Thank I, you for uh, being with us today. I'd like to introduce uh, briefly uh, Miha, Dr. Miha Pilk from Zurich. He attended ORA 2016, right? Yes, thank you. Yeah, and also Dr. Katrin Becker. She was an uh, ORA attendee and now an uh, experienced ORA instructor. Welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. So we'd like to start with you, Miha. So um, first of all, how did you get to know about the aura? Well, actually, that's quite a funny story. I was straight out of the university, very curious, wanted to pursue a career in periodontology. Um, and a friend of mine from the US, she was like, hey, Miha, I think you should apply for the aura scholarship at that time for that week in Lucerne. I was first like, Okay, that uh, sounds nice, let's give it a try. So I was lucky enough to get selected, and at that time I still remember I was walking the main street in Zurich, and I was like, that's a, actually a very, very nice city. It would be fun to live here at a certain point, and yeah, little did I know at that time that it will change at a certain point. <laughs> exactly. And uh, just out of curiosity, did you get an education grant to attend the Aura? Yes, exactly. So the, I, maybe I, you can explain what it is a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so it's a grant that supports your travels and the participation fee um, at the Aura, which is a research week. Um, at that time, it was still held in Lucerne, like now as well. And at that time, it was the full week. So what fascinated me the most was that for the first time I was in the room with like-minded people like who was so curious to see how a study can be developed how things can be done and it really inspired me to then later on continue on this path hey, very interesting thank you thank you Miha I'd like to ask you one more question Miha uh, I know you you got a, a grant and also you got a scholarship and and also you attended aura so how did the experience of the aura can uh, help you to obtain the scholarship in Zurich? Well, actually, as I said before, I first wanted to do periodontology, which in the end I also mm -hmm. did. But at that time, I came across from, mm -hmm. with people from University of Zurich, so especially Ron Jung and Daniel Thoma. Uh, talked to them a lot and other um, postgraduate students at that time. Mm -hmm. And I realized, OK, this is really a place where I would like to go mm -hmm. and to see how the things are done at that department. So later on, I tried and applied um, for the scholarship to spend a year there. And uh, at a certain point, I was lucky enough to get this opportunity. Um, really liked it, and now I'm still at the same department. So actually, Aura was a starting point for my whole next seven, eight, nine years of career. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you, Kathleen. You start as an Aura attendee and now experience the Aura instructor. So actually, 
I heard your lecture in Aura 2016, maybe in Vienna. You gave a wonderful lecture about the micro CT analysis. So uh, I'd like to ask you about the osteolo your osteology story. Uh, when was your first contact with osteology, and how did the, the Aura support your the career development? OK, thank you for this long question. So my first contact was actually in 2013. At that time, uh -huh. my supervisor for my doctorate thesis, which was in the final stages, um, and also mentor, Frank Schwarz, encouraged me to submit an abstract application for a young investigator grant. Unfortunately, it failed. But a little bit later, he again encouraged me to apply for the Osteology Research Academy uh -huh. in Lucerne. And as Miha told, it was also for me really a cornerstone of my um, scientific career. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious about what made you change from the aura attendee to the, the instructor. How did you get the opportunity? Um, I think <laughs> the osteology provided me with um, a lot of trust. This uh -huh. is what I really have to admit, because I was rather in my early stages of the career. I had the opportunity to meet excellent um, scientists and I think it was partially also into my um, dual education in computer science, medical imaging and dentistry and also to a stay at Skanker Medical in Switzerland which yeah, is a company that works with uh, microbial tomography. And then I was asked if I would give um, a lecture on the R. Mm -hmm. And it was a really stimulating mm -hmm. event where I yeah, met a lot of um, colleagues and created a network. And so I just jumped in and starting from that, I participated as an instructor and yeah, this mm -hmm. was um, a very valuable and also sort of a backbone of my research career, I would say. Great. How, how about the research network? Do you think the Aura uh, helps you to, to extend your research network as well? Yes, um, I would approve this. I think what is very important is to say that you meet a lot of enthusiastic, passionate and highly motivated people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And on the one hand, you can create a great network, you find friends, but also on the other hand, you can establish fruitful collaborations, and not just nationally, but internationally. And this exchange um, makes our so particular because it's not just for me a start. I think it was the same for, for many people who I met over there. And this is something really, really um, valuable for young scientists. And I might also add, you learn the state of the art techniques, which is also very important. So you know, how to publish the paper, which techniques are appropriate. And this is quite valuable as well. And my last question, uh, as an ORA instructor, who would you recommend this program to? So actually, I would recommend the basic module mm -hmm. to researchers who recently finished their PhD or also to um, investigators yeah, who are in the late stage of the PhD, whereas the other modules are a little bit more advanced. Mm -hmm. So for them, it makes sense to go there if you are working on the topic, you have some foundational knowledge on the topic, and then you can further enhance it and have discussions with the experts. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, both Thank of you. you. Thank you for bringing your experience. Hopefully you inspired already other people to apply and to join the Aura. Great, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you Thank so you. much. Okay, so after talking uh, about the Aura, now we would like to discuss a little bit another great opportunity that the Osteology Foundation is offering, which, here, which is the, the research scholarship. So as you know, or probably you don't know, so you're here to learn this, uh, Osteology is offering a one-year scholarship in different centers. So every year there are four different centers. And to be honest, even you, Jay, apply. Yes. You are an ex-scholar. So, <laughs> um, so uh, the application, um, if I'm not wrong, should be submitted within the 1st of December each year. And next year, amongst the different centers that uh, you can apply to, there is Frankfurt and there is Madrid. 
So you have the chance to live for one year within a renowned research center, get inspired by mentors, and be exposed to different types of research techniques and uh, uh, clinical techniques as well. So we are here to know the experience of these two bright uh, scholars, ex-scholars. So we have with us Emilio Caferata, who just finished um, the scholarship in Frankfurt, isn't it? Yes. Yes. And then we have uh, Sofia Sedilina, that finished her scholarship in Madrid. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much for inviting us here. Great. To kind. <laughs> so, so um, Emilio, let's start with you. So you, you just finished the scholarship in Frankfurt. So what was guiding your, um, your center selection? So why did you pick specifically Frankfurt? <laughs> thank you, thank you for your question. Uh, you know, I, um, when I picked this particular center, I was looking for a new challenge after finishing my PhD. So I thought that what would be the most challenging among us, and I think that the model and the disease that is treated mainly in Frankfurt Center is perimplantitis, and what best that the best mentor, Professor Frank Schwarz, was for me. So it was my safe choice and my dream center. So uh, yeah, it was my logical in order to get it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Dreams come true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a, it was a life-changing experience, yeah. and I think like to change from my basic immunology-oriented uh, research to the more clinical, like therapeutic and um, these patient-centered points is like a mutual collaboration from the experience that Professor Schwartz and also all, the, all my colleagues there give me and it enriched the research, the research experience. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. And you picked another amazing center, Madrid. So what was the reason why you picked that specific center? Uh, Honestly, at first I check the osteology website and uh, watch the video of ex-scholars. And uh, one of them is my friend, Osira Monoskaiti, who told to check the publication of every center. And I went on PubMed and checked the publication of Professor Mariana Sanz's group. And as I am in background, a maxillofacial surgeon, everything was a challenge for me. That's why period department. And then I asked my colleagues from Osteology Research Academy and from the Congress to advise. And everyone said that in Madrid there is a wonderful team and Professor Mariano Sanz is a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why I was applying for Complutense University period master. I totally understand what you mean, Sofia, because I spent one year as a <laughs> scholar in Madrid. I'd like to ask you both. And during the scholarship period, I think you guys have experienced various research topics. And could you explain what was your main uh, scientific topics and research topics, and what did you achieve scientifically? Yes, of course. Emilio? Um, well, uh, since I got my interview uh, when applying with Professor Schwartz, we talk about like uh, what are your topics, what, what can we do for you, and we started about uh, talking about uh, the immunology behind uh, perimplant disease, and we exchanged some ideas, and I think I got his interest, here, luckily, mm -hmm. and then uh, when I started working there, uh, we designed a project together in order to assess uh, the immune modulatory axis of perimplant disease, and which hasn't been like quite explored really. And we had like the first data which we presented at the DGI Congress in Hamburg, and also here. And luckily, we were awarded like a best oral presentation for that. And that's like the main result of what we were doing during the year. But also like learning since the designing of the project, uh, the execution of it, how, how the clinical measurements uh, impact uh, the final result of our, of our project, and also like manuscript writing and grant writing, because we just applied for uh, also an osteology grant, uh, a young researcher grant, and also with the ITI also. So I think I had the whole um, research experience, like from the very basic to the last part that is like uh, grant writing. 
and all of this experience ended in many publications too. I think we already have like five published wow. with our collaboration, and we have like three or four more on the way, more on the way, on the way that are being peer reviewed in very very important journals that professor only <laughs> wants the best from us and getting to that goal and succeeding in this challenge is like a, a, the best experience I think for any researcher. Wonderful. How about you, Sophia? Complutense University is a unique center because scholars can attend every lecture of the master students. And all this time I had uh, lectures for every day for five, uh, five days a week and learned periodontology. And it was a great achievement for me because Periomaster is a well-recognized group. Then participate in clinic uh, with also Periomaster students and did a lot of science. Complutense University has huge facilities regarding labs. They have, uh, they have a floor for labs and also a lot of groups uh, on different research topics. And I had a great opportunity to participate uh, in research on guided surgery with, at that moment, uh, a PhD student, Dr. Mario Romandini, and in another project with wonderful colleagues, for example, on, microbio on uh, microbiology consisting perimplantitis. And also to, uh, to learn uh, study methodology by Professor Elena Figuera, who is one of the top specialists in this topic, in my opinion. And uh, uh, I grew a lot. I, we published several uh, systematic reviews and uh, with meta-analysis and also participated in clinical studies. And uh, I'm another person and clinician now because of this scholarship. Well, I can expect that you experience a broad spectrum of research in, in Complutense University. Very nice, very nice experiences. But also from a, let's say, personal point of view, what can you tell us a bit about your experience? Because it's not just work, isn't it? Yes. You enjoyed, I guess, your time also in the different cities where you were. Yes, yes. Um, I really liked Fra uh, living in Frankfurt. Uh, it's a really quiet city in comparison to Lima, where I mm. come from. And, well, I made a lot of friends, luckily, at the Carolinum, uh, the residence of oral surgery where I was working, were always nice to me, very friendly, even though my German is very bad, uh, <laughs> and I cannot speak Spanish, obviously, there. So, yeah, it was an enriching experience, and I think, like, in the office I got to work, I was immediately next to Ashra, to Ashra Roman Skate, who was also a former scholar, yeah. and I think, we got a really nice friendship and I think like she has become like my role model and I deeply grateful for her friendship and her guidance along this year and I think also like all the advices that she gave me uh, made me now the researcher that I am now and luckily this ended also like uh, with the center offering me a new position at the Carolinum in the Goethe University. And well, now I'm there working, so. Well done. Yes, yes, thank you so much. And infinitely grateful for, uh, with the Osteology Foundation because this wouldn't be happening uh, without it, definitely. And you, Sofia? We are in Spain now, in Barcelona, and Madrid is the capital of Spain, and that's such a wonderful city with beautiful architecture. Just amazing, go, walking on the streets and see ancient statues. I was also going to museum and, uh, inspired, and was inspired by Spanish culture. But the most important thing is people people with wonderful heart. And I'm not talking only about professors or instructors. I'm also talking about students of Perio Master that are carefully selected by the, by the mentor, Professor Mariano Sanz. And uh, students help me to open my heart, to smile, and now they are my friends. And <laughs>
<laughs> I'm really sure that Jay, who has the same experience because he also spent one year in Complutense University. Yeah. And also, I learned Spanish during this year and enjoyed Spanish food. That is so delicious. Yeah, Sofia speaks uh, very good Spanish. Yeah, she surprised me when she also visited Frankfurt. Okay, yeah. <laughs> nice. I also tried to learn Spanish for one year, but it's a totally different language. So I'm, I'm not a kind of linguistic guy, so it was too difficult to learn. learn it. Yeah, I think that happened to me with German, but. I, I'm getting it. I will get there. You'll yeah. get there. You'll get there. <laughs> yeah. At last, I'd like to ask you both, what are your next steps after the scholarship period? Emilio? Uh, well, yeah, now that I have this uh, new position at the Carolinum, uh, thanks to the Osteology Scholarship, uh, my main goal is to get grants uh, under professor mentorship and in order to continue with the project I started during the scholarship that it's about the uh, immunomodulatory axis of the immune response during perimpantitis so what we are planning to do is do this uh, whole genomic and proteinomic sequencing of the inflamed tissues in order to know what is happening with the immune response in general, and then target what is wrong with it uh, in order to develop new therapeutic strategies that may uh, or may not <laughs> uh, work better for us in the case of perimplantitis management. Mm. And well, I, I think I'm following Asha's steps, so maybe get like the validation in order to become also an oral surgery or, well, become again a oral surgeon but in Germany and yeah uh, do also like the clinical research and also like giving my point of view from the immunology part mm -hmm. and you Sophia after, <clears throat> after my osteologist scholarship I had a great honor to receive ITI scholarship also in, wow. uh, yeah, in Münster University in Germany under the mentorship of Professor Johannes Kleinheinz and I spent one year there. And during all my way I was searching for my dream team. I was visiting different centers, for example, I went to Frankfurt to visit Osra and Emilio, I went to Vienna to visit Marian and to different other places. I was spending one day with a clinic, with a whole team to feel it. And uh, uh, for me it was important uh, to find a good team where I will feel good and where the team will like me and feel that I suit there. And that's quite a challenge because that's about personality and I have a feeling that I found my dream team and hope that I can officially join it soon. Yeah. And where is it? <laughs> <laughs> if I can ask. Yes. It's not secret. I will, I'm waiting for the decision of okay. head of the so, department. Fingers crossed <laughs> for okay. you. Thank you. And thank you very much, both of you, for your participation in the interview. And it was a nice conversation that could inspire the young researchers. Hope you guys have a great time in Barcelona. Thank you. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I think like the Osteology Foundation really gives opportunities to young researchers and also like researchers that come from places where research is not really uh, adequately funded. So if you're looking for a serious career in dentistry research or implant dentistry research more in particular, Osteology Foundation should be where you point at. You can yeah. get the occasion, yeah, the Perfect. opportunity. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you very much for this interview. And thank you very much, Osteology Foundation, for this life-changing opportunity. And dear colleagues, don't afraid to apply for the scholarship. It really could change your life. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, finally, I'd like to introduce uh, Osteology Research Traineeship. And this is a newly launched program which is a three months training on a specific method or a research model or a technique. So it has an advantage of free choice of host institution.
Today we have two recipients on the stage who completed this program last year. First, Dr. Amit Gaupart, who did a research traineeship in Hanover, and Dr. Marianne Soldi, she was a trainee in King's College London. So welcome both. Thank you so much you. for the invitation. Welcome. So uh, Amit, let's start with you. Uh, because this is a, a new program, so uh, first of all, my question is, how did you get to know about the program? Yeah, I actively follow the box, which is the Ostology Global Community Platform. And this is the place where I came across this advanced research traineeship. Uh, I remember that uh, uh, there was a short video by Professor Lisa Heights Mayfield explaining about the concept of advanced research traineeship and encouraging the young researcher to actively take role into this application. And moreover, I found that this program is more unique because it gives us the opportunity to select the center where you, your research background matches with that center. So I feel it's a, it was a very good opportunity to apply over this. Great. And so why did you pick specifically that center? What was the, the motivation for you? Uh, I always believe that there should be a striking balance between the clinical practice and research. And I had a strong motivation, and I was more interested in doing uh, implant biomaterials, especially focusing on development of new implant strategies. Mm -hmm. uh, Hanover Medical School in Germany, they have a unique center where they develop new strategies of implant. Basically, it's a translational and clinical research center where interdisciplinary research happens in the field of dental, cochlear and orthopedic implants, which I found to be more attractive because mm. where you can just learn everything under one roof. And prof uh, the Stish Lab, which is headed by Professor Micah Stish, who is also currently the director of uh, prosthetic dentistry, is one of the important part of this center. Uh, her group is also involved in development of uh, osteogenic and antibacterial implant surfaces as well as they work on perimplant infection. So I thought this would be a very good opportunity for young researcher like me to be in the part of that group. So I would like to thank Osteology Foundation for this new unique type of uh, program which they have introduced for young researcher like us. Absolutely. So you found the right center for you, for yeah, your yeah. needs. Yeah. And uh, how was the training? Yeah, uh, to be honest, it was a really great experience. Mm. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it covered everything from uh, research training, clinical case discussion, collaborative, and uh, other types of event. And I am looking forward to take all my experience back home and share my knowledge to my students and apply it at my clinical center and research. Moreover, this has created opportunity for me to uh, not only at my home institution, but to apply at an international platform. And I believe that this is a milestone in my research career. So I will urge all the researcher to not to miss this opportunity and up, go ahead with the application. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you so much. I'd like to ask you, Maria. You started this program uh, right after completing your scholarship period in, in Vienna, right? Last year. So uh, why did you apply for the research traineeship to King's College London at that time? Please tell your story. Thank you for your question. So yeah, so I started my traineeship right after my scholarship. And it was exactly the perfect fit uh, for my needs at the moment. So what happened to me was I was a visiting, school, a visiting researcher at King's College London when I was doing my PhD when the COVID struck. And then I had to go back to Brazil, and then with the desire to continue on research, I applied for the Osteology Foundation Research Scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I was very lucky to be selected by Professor Gruber, and we developed a, a really, really nice relationship. Uh, I can tell like Gruber was a, a true mentor, in a, and he still is, in a way that he's always, uh, he was worried to, uh, look for me, uh, he was there to help me to prepare the experiments, but especially to 
uh, analyze the data and write articles. And I think we were very successful in that, in a way that we managed to publish some articles in a period of one year. And uh, I found this uh, program that was uh, exactly what my niece, as I said, because it was a short uh, uh, period of time that uh, I could go deeper on the techniques that I couldn't go so deep when I was doing my, my first visit in London. So I applied for it, it and I was very lucky again to be selected. So it's nice that you can select the, the host in this institution. And uh, I was selected, I went there. And different from my scholarship, it was more technical. And it was very challenging in a way that um, my environment there was uh, quite different. So I had uh, surround, uh, I was surrounded by scientists that were uh, biologists from, and engineers. And the center is for craniofacial and regenerative biologists. So I had there uh, scientists, uh, I don't know, studying zebrafish, things that were very hard for me to understand. So it was very challenging but also was lucky to have some nice colleagues. They were there patient to explain me uh, the new techniques that I was supposed to learn. And yeah, that kept me motivated to uh, keep going on this project. And after, war, after that, after this uh, three months trainship, I received some more grants. And yeah, so I keep doing the, the research uh, that um, I started during my traineeship. And how was the training in London? And you, which, can you explain which skills did you focus to learn or, or which uh, experimental models which did you learn? Yeah, so the idea was to study the stem cells transitions and the differentiation process. So I was learning flow cytometry uh, and I was doing, uh, using some drugs and methods to differentiate the cells. So the idea was to watch closely how the cells were like in a niche, that were, they were like so, slow cycling, uh, somehow key ascent, to a way that were, they would proliferate faster and then differentiate. And that is to understand how the stem cells uh, would uh, actually work or help us in the regenerative medicines. So the techniques I was there to learn were like facts, RNA sequencing, and some bioinformatics. Uh, when you have like a, a clinical background or you're a dentist, it is, I can tell, like, it's very challenging, especially the bioinformatics because it's a, a whole new world to understand. I see. How did you perceive the mentorship or the research team and working in, Mo in, in Mosbier? How was it? Um, yeah, it was uh, nice, different. Uh, it wasn't, my relation wasn't so, uh, I was more independent, let's mm. say. Uh, but that's, that's good because uh, you have to work for yourself. But uh, yeah, I was, I was always supported by my mentor and my colleagues, they were always there uh, to help me. So it was very good, yeah. Great. And yeah, last question, what's your next steps? Well, so now I'm a postdoctoral researcher and then a visiting researcher at King's College London. So I'll keep doing my project there. So now uh, that I developed myself on these methods and these techniques, I will uh, develop a little bit more my project and get more results and then try to move forward. So the idea is to, as you said, actually, like, uh, I think uh, it's always nice to find a balance on be between basic research and dentistry and clinical uh, research. So my my goal, let's say, it's to make like this bridge in between basic research and clinical applications. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Marianne and, and Amit. I mean, I think you are, both of you and all the other people that were here today, great examples of how um, the Astrology Foundation was able to boost your career or at least give you an opportunity. Then, of course, you took the opportunity, but it was given to you, isn't it? So it's, it's a great... Um, it gives you a great possibility, a great chance to enhance your career and develop further. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, thank you. I do agree with you. I think I could uh, look back uh, before I was a scholar and uh, after being a scholar, after mm -hmm. being a trainee, how I did develop myself, uh, even like to perform my own experiments, to like make independent research and even like to give lecture. 
Uh, so it is a big progress and an opportunity that was given and I think uh, it's a great opportunity that everyone should at least try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much all the participants and also thank you Elena to share the stage with you. Thank and you, Jay. Yeah, uh, hope you have a good time in Barcelona. Thank you very much. Thank you.